Okay, I'm going to try recording the acoustic guitar today. And one of the things that I have on my DBX, I have a feature for equalization. Uh, first, let's just get an overall level. I'm just going to strum some six string chords. turn this input down just a little bit. I do not want it in the red. Yeah, even a little more than that. However, the, um, the input is going to change depending on the placement of the microphone as well. So there's a, a lot of little moving parts going on with this. So right now, I have the mic set smack in front of the hole of the guitar. Uh, kind of a risky proposition because you get a lot of lows um, and you get a, a lot of noise of the fingers touching the strings if you play gently. Now if you play it firmly, strong, then you know the sound of your fingers is covered up by the sound of the instrument vibrating. So again, a lot of moving factors and parts to this uh, problem here. Okay, so you really hear the box of the guitar with the microphone. It is very close. It is probably less than six inches away from this hole right here. Let's do another experiment with the microphone placement. Okay. Uh, I've read and heard about people that want to record their guitar away from the hole. Okay, so they might put the the microphone closer to the box. Okay, but not at pointing at the hole of the acoustic guitar. Altogether different sound. It's not up close and personal, not a bad sound, there's nothing wrong with it, but I prefer that right up close, just talking right into your ear type of a sound. I've even heard of people that will record the acoustic guitar with two microphones. They'll put one over here or sometimes even toward the back of the guitar, and then they'll put a second one either in front of the hole or closer to the middle over here. It really comes down to personal preference. But I'm also noticing a little bit of the compressor action with the, the little bit of that wah where it uh, has to react to what's happening. And depending on the kind of music I'm going to be recording, I might want to change the settings on my compressor for that reason. If I want it to sound um, less compressed, then I'm going to take this threshold over here and make it higher. See, so that not as much of the signal is being compressed at all. Let's listen to this. Okay, the signal went up a lot in the output. In fact, in my headphones, I'm even detecting a distortion might be from the input being too hot. Okay, definitely the input is too hot and I can verify that from my uh, AD converter right here. It's showing the red right now. Okay, so that's too much signal. We're going to take this back, turn down that output, turn down this input. Let's try it again. That's closer to what I want, but I'm probably going to play harder than that when I actually record the song, so I have to be careful to adjust for that as well. Let's add a little bit more compression by releasing this threshold back. Now we're getting close. That sounds about... That sounds pleasant to me. Okay, now... There's a four band uh, parametric EQ. Uh, two of the bands are just high and low. Okay, there's a low 
at a high, and then the other one you select the frequency and then you select how much you want to boost or cut that frequency area. So this low frequency uh, cut or boost is normally I will put this back. Mostly what I hear personally coming through this filter if I keep it up is I hear the air conditioner fans. So I keep that down for that reason. Okay, let's go ahead and demonstrate the high frequencies on the EQ setting here. Uh, the e if we turn it d up, you should hear more of the attack from the fingers of the right hand. I especially notice this on the low strings. If we reduce the highs or cut the highs back by going counterclockwise, now we should get the opposite effect. We will not hear the fingertip attack very well. And then in the, in the middle here, I'm going to have to listen to the playback in order to make decisions on that EQ level right there. And you know, headphones presents a whole nother problem with recording, is that can you trust what you're hearing in your headphones to be, you know, true and accurate? My EQ is set so that the, uh, the plus and minus, or in other words, the boost cut is not active. It's just no, it's flat. But let's go ahead and activate it and then let you listen to what that's like. Uh, somewhere down in this 200 zone, it uh, amplifies the low tones a little bit more. And in a recording, it might be a little too much of the bottom end, so I can cut back using this. Okay, so again, I got this somewhere around the 200s, and then it's cut back several dB. Listen to the difference here. See, a big difference in the low frequencies. I'm still preoccupied with that tiny little bit of clipping. <laughs> so let me get this down a little bit more. Okay, now let's try boosting the low tones just so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, here's the same thing. Okay. And it's almost like the bottom strings sound louder than the high strings. That G string starts to disappear a little bit. Okay, now let's change the frequency to a higher frequency. Okay, this should be more of those mid-high range sounds. Oh, I can hear it in my voice already. We're now boosting the uh, mid-highs. Yeah, and I can hear a little increase of these top three strings. Let's go for the real highs over here. We're boosting the highs. I notice it on the E string. One more setting on the EQ that I haven't shown you yet is if we set the frequency right in the middle here, that's about the 1K area, 
let's put the highs back up to just you know flat let's keep the lows down like I because I usually do that and now let's go ahead and cut that 1k area okay so now it's down roughly minus 10 or 12 DB let's see if you notice any difference here you might notice a difference in my speaking voice Okay, now let's try boosting the same frequency. We're going to turn this up to about plus 10. Okay, you should notice a big difference in my speaking voice. That's because the 1K uh, hertz, it's like the sound of the telephone voice from long ago. How do you think it sounds for the guitar? My favorite EQ settings for the acoustic guitar is to have this low down, uh, again, largely for air conditioning fans, but this uh, low frequency somewhere around the 200 220 somewhere in there and then I cut it back with the attenuator oh, a lot like 8 to 10 DB and then I leave the highs flat and this usually gives me a, a nice tone I can keep the microphone really close but I reduce some of the deepness that's associated with getting close to the hole of the guitar and so I get a nice overall. So in summary, it's all about your personal taste, isn't it? Because you can boost lows, you can boost the mids, the highs, and it's just, what are you after? Uh, also, what is going to blend when this instrument uh, is in the mix with other instruments, right? If you have a lot of low, deep instruments, you don't want to add another one, do you? And if you don't have any low deep instruments then that would change your mind on how to EQ your acoustic guitar.